our next speaker is Dr. Sue McCready, or Dr. Sue to everyone that knows her. I have a lot of friends that have been telling me for years about Dr. Sue, and I'm so excited that she's been able to come because she is one of those rare doctors that really understands and knows about nutrition, knows that food is a drug and we need to treat it that way. And, I, and if you look on her website and you start looking at what she's done, she's actually started an organization co-founded co called the Right, is it the Right Real Food or Get Real for Kids? Get Real for Kids. She's got a booth here where you can hear more about it very, very involved in trying to get children to eat right, because as we keep learning, that's a critical component for their success. So Dr. Sue is going to talk about nutrition. Um, so I'm also feeling restricted, because I'm like a mover. <laughs> And I also feel like I just, what I really want to do is go outside right now and cry because of this story. I mean, like, I gotta like keep moving that through. It is so huge. And um, like, you guys are my heroes. <laughs> totally my heroes. Completely, utterly my heroes. So. Um, so, I'm Dr. Sue, and I can't go outside and cry right now because Julie asked me to speak. And when I talked to Julie on the phone, she said, yeah, I hear from all my friends that you're like the nutrition doctor. I'm like, I am? I didn't know that. I, I guess I am. I think my, my journey has been similar to Dr. News, where I'm sort of a you know, square peg trying to fit into a round hole. I am a traditional trained medical doctor. I did my training down at... Children's Hospital in Michigan for three years, and I stayed on as an extra year as their chief resident. And that has many roles, including teaching administrative, which wasn't the fun part. Um, but it was there that I sort of lifted my head from the blinders. <clears throat> I started looking around and being, you know, what it, what's my piece here? What do, what do I bring to medicine, and, and why am I a doctor in the first place? Because so many thoughts that go through my head are not conventional doctor thoughts. Um, and so it was then at that time that I sort of started to bridge and read and learn more about alternative, um, alternative therapies, alternative ways of healing. I think what I saw as my as chief resident down at Children's Hospital in Michigan was that it was sort of like a revolving door. You know, we were just treating the symptoms on the surface. We weren't really getting to the core, to the inside, to help the child heal from the inside out. So conventional medicine is great. I'm not anti-conventional medicine. I think we need both. I think it's about a balance. My favorite place to be in the hospital was in the intensive care unit because that's when kids were circling the drain. And that's when drugs are amazingness. <laughs> They're amazing. They, they plug up the drain and the, and the child walks out of the hospital. So, but what I started to realize that year was the asthma kids, you know, you give them a breathing treatment, you pump them up with steroids, they're good, they walk home, they go out the door, a few weeks later, they're back into the ED, the emergency department, wheezing again, patch them up with some steroids, walk them out the door, and I thought, I can't, I can't do this, I, I can't do this. And so I did something very non-conventional. <laughs> As my mentors at Children's Hospital Michigan said, you're gonna do what? <laughs> I said, I'm gonna start my own practice. So about a decade ago, I went into private practice. So I've been practicing for about 10 years. Um, and after my first child was born, I focused solely on consultative pediatrics, meaning that every child who comes to see me has another child, or has another pediatrician who uh, does their primary care needs and what I focus on is helping the child heal from the inside out getting to the core imbalances whether it's digestive and nervous system immune system and really helping them rebalance um, and so kids come to me with all sort of different labels autism is one of them but uh, allergies asthma ADD ADHD anxiety the lovely constipation inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis, tons of autoimmune diseases. Um, so a real variety. And a few years ago, we actually launched last year, I decided that um, my greatest purpose is this, like to get out and to speak about it, and to 
get people not only in a physical room, but a virtual room. And that's why we created the nonprofit GetRealForKids.com. So I'll be speaking more about that. It's about educating and inspiring pe parents, people, educators, basic physicians, nurses, anyone who cares about kids being happier and healthier, anyone who realizes that we're not doing a good enough job. We need to do better and we can do better. And it's not that hard. Small, simple steps in the right direction will get us there. So I encourage all of you to check out GetRealForKids.com because it is a place where we can meet community-wise, touch each other's lives, spirit to spirit. I've heard several speakers up here. That's probably the most important thing to do is find your tribe. This is a tribe. These are like-minded spirits. These are people that can connect with you and keep you going. Because um, I don't know about the other practitioners, but from the families that I work with, the most successful families are the ones who branch out, like get in a room like this, move forward. I call them mom warriors. You know, anything, I will get it done. So it is a total honor to be here. I am also a mom to Caitlin, L, and Addison. So those are my three girlies. Let's see, how do I work this? Like that? There. So here are my three girls. This was taken a couple years ago, but they're nine, six, and about to turn four next week. Um, and I've heard also up here on the stage about accepting what is, and so I want you to all know that I am not immune to these labels. So one has full-blown asthma <laughs> and is currently on daily inhaled steroids, which for me, in my profession, I was like, is this really happening? <laughs> and I'm in the allergist office, who's a friend of mine, and to it totally accepts what I do, and we have self-referrals back and forth. And I said, is this really happening? Is this happening to me? My child has full-blown asthma. I have to put her on daily inhaled steroids. What have I done up until this point? You know, how did we get here? How did we end up here? And then another diagnosis between these three girls is anxiety, anxiety. So I am definitely, and I have my own journey that I'll share more with you in the longer talk about my um, hormonal and digestive disasters, that's what I call them. Um, but these three are my teachers, for sure, they keep me going. So I too look at it as a journey <laughs> with probably no end. But the empowering part is that you just make small, simple steps in the right direction. It's not about you know, getting from here to there in the next day. The whole joy of it, which actually I was talking to Joy about it, the whole joy is in the process, the acceptance, the fact that your child is your God's giving greatest gift to you. And yeah, they may be super duper difficult, and their issues may really pull you and drag you through the muck but they will get you to a much better place if you accept what they are and where you are. So to me, the biggest first step on the real health journey is just to eat the right real food for you, which sounds like it should be pretty simple, and I actually have spent my lifetime figuring out what the best right diet is for me, because it is um, not an easy thing to figure out. So that's really what I'm gonna teach you about. I think it's easy now, but I, I think it was definitely part of my 10 years of process to figure out how to get chi children on this right real food diet. And by the way, I would encourage you to ask people who are on this journey, I always do, it's like, what, what were the best modalities? What were the biggest modalities? What were the biggest needle turners for your child to recover? And everyone that I've talked to so far has always not mentioned food. It's like we are what we eat, right? So in the 60-minute talk, I mean, sort of this education roadmap is we're going to talk about what is real food, because many people don't even know what real food is, why real food matters, um, not all real food is the right real food for your child, and that's where I think a lot of people don't even realize that. You can be eating the most amazing nutrient-dense form of raw dairy, and it can be totally harming your body because it's not the right food for you. The test to decide your child's right real food. And most importantly, how to find a practitioner in your area to get this done. Because all of us want, we want to make that step. We want to move to the next step. 
Um, and then also why the right real food is not everything. I wish it was. I wish it was, but I've clearly learned from my daughter that it's not. Um, getting on the right real food diet is the first step, but there's many steps to establishing your child's health. And the most important step is the last step. The next step is to really find your tribe. Find the people that keep you going. They give you inspiration, but also education. So there's plenty in this room. So in my talk, I'll always talk about inspiration along the way, because that's what the parents do for me and my practice, the families. They're my inspiration. Um, this picture is <clears throat> so beautiful. I had to take the power out of autism in order to move forward on my son's journey to healing. This woman is actually in this room, and she has taught me so much about autism, and that actually was her mother. It was her mom who said, you know what, Bernice? You really need to take the power out of the word autism so you can move to the next step. And I think that's so true, it's what Joy was talking about. You have to accept what is so that you can move forward. So real food, real food grows. Think gardens and farms. It can be that simple, but in the world that we live in and the advertising that we hear, it gets really, really crazy confusing. So we'll talk about that and resources that you can turn to. Um, why real food matters is in a nutshell, real food matters because it's like the language that our body speaks. And the, most, the, the analogy that I keep on coming up with is sort of going into McDonald's, getting to the counter, and asking them for an organic salad, a pastured chicken with some eggs, and some homemade raw milk dressing. And, and the prisoner will be like, what are you talking about? We don't offer that here. I feel like that's what we're doing to our bodies every day when we're sending in this food. It's like non-communicado, it's just it's not right. It's total disconnect. And not only is it total disconnect, but it's sort of like a tornado whirlwind. You know, it's almost as if that person at the McDonald's restaurant explodes in anger or whatever frustration that they can't provide you with this, and it's a tornado effect on the body. So real food matters because in a nutshell, that's how our cells communicate. And on a physical level, we are a bag of organized cells that create organ systems. I mentioned this resource in the 15 minute because if you don't come to hear me speak in the 60 minute, I want you to know about this book. It's a New York Times bestseller now. This one just totally hit it out of the park because she does such a great job with visuals. So if you want to know what real food, nuts and bolts, in a visual way, you can buy her book. It's $20 on Amazon. Or you can go to her website, balancebites.com, and she has all these free downloadable PDFs. So this is actually how I teach nutrition in my practice now, because her PDFs are so amazing. I print them out, and I sit down with the patient and walk, walk through them. So we'll do a little bit of that in the 60-minute talk, but I want you to know that if you don't come see me, definitely, this is a nuts and bolts, the best book I've seen, read, and really the way that she graphs it out makes it so super simple. This is a patient of mine, Gluten and Dairy, Who Needs Them? A Kid's Perspective by Lexi Cantor. So this is Lexi. She says, being gluten and dairy free helped me with sleeping, being nicer to my sisters, stomach aches, puking in my mouth, and heart problems. And so I love this girl. She, she is amazing. She was so angry when I said that her testing really shows that she should remove gluten and dairy from her diet. And she was really angry with good right. Lots of kids are angry when they leave my office and they're sad. There's always a whole range of emotions that can, can happen because Re removing things from your diet is difficult, and navigating the best right diet for you is difficult. It's probably one of the hardest things I think to do on the real, on the real health journey is dietary changes. And I used to avoid it for the first few years of my practice. I'd be like, oh, I know, it's so hard to do. Don't worry about it. It's okay. 
we'll do other things. We'll, you know, take this probiotic or, you know, it's okay. And then I started realizing, Sue, you're, you're not helping the situation here. What you really need to tell them is, yeah, I know it's darn hard, but it's really, really important. Food is a huge thing. It's huge. It's not everything, but it's a huge thing. And so Lexi, when I was bold and said, Lexi, I really think taking gluten and dairy out of your diet, you're going to feel a lot better. Well, she decided to do it with her mom. But then she came back. I don't know if it was the first visit, the second visit, the third visit. I don't know. But she came back and she said, I'm writing a book and I'm starting a blog, Dr. Sue. And I, was like, <laughs> I was so happy, so happy. And so then she came back. Once I was the person who said, OK, if you're going to do a blog, do WordPress, you know, telling her where to get the book published and all of this. Then she comes back and she goes, this is my book, Dr. Seuss. So I look at it. She goes, and that'll be $20, please. <laughs> I was like, wait, I'm featured in the book. I'm featured in the book. So anyways, when I was preparing this, I looked at her uh, blog. And I loved this blog post. Um, it was about how she had a tantrum in the mall because she could not find something that met the gluten and dairy-free guidelines. So she had a big meltdown. And then after she ex explains the whole meltdown, she says in the end, you just need to believe in yourself. That's how I calm down. Until next time, Lexi. And then she says, PS, I am not going to quit my diet because I am not a quitter. And the diet may actually help. But then what I love is she put a question mark there. It's like she was totally like pushing Dr. Sue. Like it may actually help, it may not Dr. Sue. So, <clears throat> but not all real food is right for you. So that, so Lexi is a perfect example of that. One of the two common things that are removed from a child's diet is gluten and dairy. So we'll talk about that and how diet is very person specific. It's very individualized. What's great for one may be disastrous for another. And so the two major pitfalls I see when real food actually harms is when the foods that the child is eating triggers a negative immune reaction. And those sort of in categories are food allergies and food intolerances. So we'll talk about the differences between those, how they're similar and how they're different. And one's not in, recognized at all in conventional medicine, food intolerances. <clears throat> the other major pitfall when real food harms is when food is not completely digested. So one of my great teachers taught me about the fact that what you eat is huge, the diet, what you put into your body. But if your digestive system doesn't break down those nutrients and absorb the nutrients to get into the cells at the cellular level, it doesn't matter. So diet's a huge something, but the second part is that you have to be able to digest the food and absorb the nutrients so that it can heal your body. So a big problem when food is not digested happens with gluten and dairy. When you have uh, not completely digested gluten and dairy, they can affect your nervous system, make you cloudy thinking, have attention issues, focusing problems, behavioral problems. The list goes on and on. And the other, when food is not completely digested, feeds into a vicious, vicious cycle of what we call dysbiosis or leaky gut, imbalanced bacteria, bad bacteria, yeast, parasites, things that, you know, not enough beneficial bacteria. So there's a real imbalance, and health is about balance. And then I'll go into specifics about these tests and, and show you the actual results. They're blood tests, urine tests, and stool tests. And I sort of think of them as three overlapping circles. And what we're going for is that bullseye. We're going for the center one. When we interpret all three of these tests and sort of analyze them and put them together, the, right, the child's right real food diet is that bullseye. And then I'll talk to you about how to find a practitioner. But if you want to know in two seconds, <laughs> the way that you find a practitioner is you go to the lab, the labs, the people who do the blood testing, the people who do the urine testing, the people who do the stool testing. You call up the lab and you say, hey, I'm here in Asheville, North Carolina. Who is a practitioner in my area that does this test? And they have a whole laundry list of the, the practitioners who do it. So you, that's how you sort of get behind the back door. Or, you know, you go to your tribe, the tribe here, and ask, you know, who, who do you know that does this testing? 
So a little bit what I'm talking about, though, at the end is really about why the right real food is not everything. And I think that's where a lot of people often enter into my practice. Like, Dr. Sue already tried a gluten casein free diet. Yep, did nothing. Here I sit. Well, I sort of think of it as, you know, how does your garden grow? I mean, I don't know about you, my mom always teases me because she is an amaz amazing horticulturalist. I mean, she can grow anything from nothing into everything. She would give me plant after plant and she would be like, you know, why are you killing all these things? But yet you can keep yourself and your family alive. I'm like, I don't know. I think I'm good with the humans and not so much with the plants. Uh, but how does your garden grow? I often think about it as we're little seeds. We need not only the right water, the right food, we need the right sunlight, the right pH balance. We need to, you know, be growing next to another so that we can, you know, pollinize each other. I mean, there's so many interacting things besides just getting the right real food in. And so often I give that analogy when I have a patient who comes in and has already tried the gluten dairy free diet or carbohydrates diet, specific carbohydrate diet, paleo diet, GAPS diet, and that diet is a huge something, but it's not everything. And so often people have removed foods from their diet without really fixing the digestion component. So healing the digestive gut, which right over here, muddy guts, <laughs> uh, healing the digestive system is huge. It's huge. It's not only what we take in, it's how we digest and assimilate that information so they can get into the cells, so that the cells can reorganize and talk to each other effectively. Um, the other huge com big component that I do in my practice is called drainage. So I'll sort of just introduce that concept in the 60 minute talk, but it's, it's akin to, you know, getting the junk out, you know, so you sweep up your house and you put it in the trash can, but then you have to take your trash can out to the curb. Otherwise you're just going to get more and more trash cans full of garbage and junk overflowing your house. So that's what drainage is all about, getting the junk out of your body. And then once you get, the, you get on the right real food diet, you heal your digestive system so that you can actually digest and assimilate that nutrition. Then you go on to clean all the, the junk out. Then it's sort of like reorganizing a messy closet. You know, kids who come into me, their closets are really disorganized. They're somewhat functioning in their life, but it takes them a whole lot longer to do anything. So I think of it as, you know, we're gonna reorganize your closet. Your socks are here, your underwear is here, your shirt's here, your pants are here, and you can get dressed so much faster in the morning once you reorganize your closet. And I find that 80% of it is diet and digestive rebalance and drainage. And then there's the other components, the history, all the genetics, a lot of what Dr. New is talking about, mitochondrial dysfunction, the genetics, the things that are a little bit hardwired, but I'm sure he'll touch on this too, is the whole field of epigenetics, the fact that we are changeable. Our genes are not fixed. Depending on what we put into them, they can express differently. And I think that's a very empowering way to look at genes. And then also the mindset, which I find is huge in my practice. The mindset, sort of that mantra, accepting what is, coming to the realization that this is where we are so that we can move forward. And for me, a whole huge component, like with my child and anxiety I'll share with you, is <laughs> spirituality. It's just like, raise me above this crazy chaos so that I can actually find a higher perspective, so I can actually get my child moving forward and healing, rebalanced. So the last step that I would talk about is what you should do the next step before you even leave today. Make connections with other people. Connect with their stories. Listen to them. Get inspired. Find out who helps them. Get education from them and find your tribe. That's what we're really doing with Get Real for Kids, is finding the tribe. It's helping you find the tribe. It's an online place. It's an online community where we can inspire and educate each other so that together we become a collective force, a collective voice for change so that we can make these kids happier and healthier and we can turn millions of kids around to health and happiness. Another quote from Bernice, <laughs> whatever you believe in, is what you become. So believe in healing. Believe it's possible, because it is. It's possible. Thank you. <laughs>